Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to this video. This is John from Programming Knowledge and this is part 9 of our video tutorial series on how to create an e-commerce website using React.js and in this video, we're going to add more features to our e-commerce website and of course, this is a, a custom um, e-commerce website and um, we're going to be adding a lot of uh, features so, for example, I see that the Amazon website has this um, menus right after the header. So, in this video, we're going to add that. Um, this links right here, we could add that um, here in our Amazon clone for um, like an e-commerce website. So, we're going to add links here just below the header section of our app or our website. So in order for us to do that, we could add um, the links. Maybe we will be just using the header component right, uh, right here. And um, just below the nav. Or you know what? We could create a new file for our nav links. So what we could do is add a new file right here. And we're going to name it as nav links. There you go, navlinks.js. And of course, we're going to add another file, which is the navlinks.css. There you go. Now, what we could do here is add the component that will hold all these links right here. So we have a semi-black uh, semi background, and um, we can just copy this color right here, or the background color itself. So what we could do is add a functional component right here. So that will be function and then nav links. Open and close parentheses and open and close curly braces. And then of course we need to import React because we're gonna be using JSX here. And this um, should return um, a set of element. So for example, let's just add h1 for now. And of course, we need to import the CSS file. So that will be navlinks.css. There you go. And inside the h1, um, let's say for example, navlinks for now. So save. And inside our app.js, we're going to, um, right after the header part, we're going to import the navlinks. We're going to be adding the navlinks right here. So, um, I think we need to export this. So export default and then of course nav links. There we go. And inside our app.js we're gonna be using that export. So nav links open um yeah single component tag nav links and then we can save this. And let's try to check our application. So nav links is not defined. That's because we need to import this. Import nav links from, and this will be from nav links, of course. Save. And we should be getting this particular output right here. As you can see, nav links. Now, what we will try to do is try to copy the color of this particular element right here uh, coming from the Amazon website. So we could just select this particular element, for example, this. So main nav, and we should be able to get the background of this. So the background is this, okay? So what we could do here in our nav links, we can add a div. And this should be of class name uh, nav, nav links. There you go. And the nav links, nav links will be, uh, will have this particular color. Okay. Copy that and paste it here. Save and um, for example, test, save, and let's try to preview our app. 
so we're getting this particular output right here but let's try to check if we could get um the height so 39 px so that will be height is 39 pixels so save and there you go and of, of course we need to change the color of the text like for example white okay so test and of course inside our nav links we will create um, another element or add another element that will try to position our um, elements or links okay so for example we have this just below the um, search icon that we have or search bar that we have so for example okay so what we could do is um, name this div or add name to this div so this will be nav links um, underscore underscore outer and the outer link or element will be with um, we're going to be adding a position to this or yeah we, uh, we could add the width so for example width we could change it into for example 70 percent of the width of our screen and of course we can add a margin auto to this there you go and as you can see um, it moves our text right here okay now what we could do also um, okay so what we could do is add padding to this padding to our nav links so padding and then um, perhaps five pixels will be enough okay so or maybe six let's make it six there you go and then of course this should be um, link right so let's try this link okay and we should place the test bird inside the link component so save and uh, we're getting this particular output right here now if you try to inspect this and see um, the output for this particular component so as you can see here we have nav links underscore underscore outer and then we're getting the a or the um what do you call this link tag now what we could do is target that link tag so that will be nav links and then outer outer and then of course the uh, link component and what we could what we could do is try to change the color into something white uh, white smoke and um, text decoration is none and cursor will be pointer so save that and there you go we're getting this particular output and of course what we could do is take this further by adding a hover effect to this and we can say that the um, border of this link will be white so um, that will be border and then 1px solid and then for example white save that and let's go back to our app okay what we could do now is add padding to this 5px okay and we could change the um, border radius so border radius will be for example 4 pixels to have that um, like rectangular with um, curve edges not the um, straight um, edges as you can see here just like what we have in the real Amazon website so also we could add a margin to this so margin top will be 5 pixels okay 
There you go. Um, um, we could add that here. So, mar uh, yeah. Margin top will be 5 pixels. No, not like, not, not like that. But let's just add this from here. So, margin top will be 10 px. Okay. Okay. So, notice that the real Amazon website has this, um, like, space between or space um, before and after the link so what we could do is try to try to copy that okay So margin top, um, that will be, um, what we could do here is add another div to hold our links. Okay, so div, and then let's give this a name, footer, ah, it's not footer, we're not on the footer area. So it should be nav links, right? So nav links inside here, we're going to add another div and this will be, okay. So that's why we're not getting the output. Let's try this once again, save. And uh, now nav links outer, last name. Okay. So add another div and this will be class name equals nav links underscore underscore inner okay and then we could paste this link inside here and add um, margin to that so that will be nav links instead of outer it should be inner open and close curly braces and we can add here the margin top for example 10 pixels let's try that and it's too much five okay there you go um a bit better than before okay and what we could do also is add the border to our default link and then let's say the color of this is like that okay so like we have a fixed position for our text so for example um we're going to copy the the link or the text right here so for example today's deals okay let's just have this for now and later on we could add the functionality to sign in and sign up into our application or e-commerce website so let's just copy and paste this and what we could do is change the link or the text of the link into customer service for example and um gift cards and this will be registry and sell so again we're going to be adding a lot of features to our application and um, if you want to like follow our video tutorial you can do so and maybe we can add margin to the right of our link so that will be margin right let's say 10 pixels save okay so it should be the same with our background there you go so like that 
and maybe reduce the margin like three or yeah three okay so there you go now we have this links just below our header component now as i've said um we can try to work with our login or sign up um, feature so in here we could specify the email and then password and then right after that we could click on sign in and then we, we can try to track the the login user right after that but the user has also the option if uh, he will specify the email here and of course the password and then he can create the account right inside our application or e-commerce website so what we could do is work with this login component as you can see here we have the login component login.js right so in here we're going to be adding a lot of, of logic um, especially for logging in into our system and basically from the previous tutorial we have worked with the data layer and of course we can use that data layer inside this particular component login.js and of course this time um, instead of the basket we could try to track the user that has been logged into our system so what we could do now is go back to our reducer.js and currently we're just tracking the basket or the items inside our basket now what we could uh, add here is another state and this will be log in uh, user okay and we will be setting this to null so this is the initial state of our logged in user so of course if the user once our, our application starts then we will be um, the state of the login user will be null now inside our reducer constant as you can see here we could um, add another case right here so this will be um, case set login okay and then right after that if we receive this particular set login action we're going to be returning the user state so that will be uh, whatever our state and then we're going to change the um, login user so that will be logged in user and then of course action and the um, user that has been added to the action so we could try this and um, this will this will uh, make sense later on if we are in our login that js component so save our reducer first and let's try to open up our login.js and inside here we're gonna be adding the um the login function that every time we click on this particular sign in we're going to call the sign in with email and password um, of the firebase database so that will be inside our login um yeah login button then what we could do here is call a function so we could add here on click and then we could name this as login user so of course it's going to complain that's because we need to add this particular constant function right here uh, just before returning any element or returning any gsx so that will be const login user and then equals event equals um, curly braces there you go and we're going to prevent the default behavior of our submit button so that will be event that prevent default okay um, 
what we could do is use the oath that we are getting from our Firebase file. As you can see here, let's just check that. So we have here the oath um, constant. So we could um, use that. So what we could do is import and then the oath from Firebase. There we go. And then in here, what we could do is use that particular component and then call the sign in with email and password. Okay. And then we need to specify here the email and the password. So email and password. Okay. And of course, we need to have a state right here. So we're going to be adding here um, the state um, email and then set email. Uh, yeah. Or maybe we could use, yeah, like user email. User email and set user email equals use state. There you go. And then we could do the same for our password. So user password and then set user password just like that. And of course, we're going to be using use state here. And of course, we need to import this from React. So that will be use state. Okay. And um, inside our lag in function, we're going to add the then keyword. And then, of course, whatever the result of this sign in with email and password. And then arrow function. And then curly braces. And of course, we're going to um, redirect. To the home page if the sign in with email and password is successful okay so if something happens with our logic right here what we could do is um, add an alert so alert and then e that message okay so here we could also add the history. That's because we need to import that coming from our React Router DOM. So that will be cons history and then equals use history. Okay. So this is coming from our React Router DOM. So history and use history. And um, I think we could what we could do is try to test this for now um by the way we need to like um add the event handler for if our user tries to type in the email and password so the value of this will be the user email so user and then email and then on change will be um, event equals and then set user email and we're going to get the event dot target dot value okay and then um, yeah the type is email okay and we will do the same for our password so the value of this will be user password and then the event is on change equal curly braces much the same with our email so that will be set user password and then we're going to get the event and then target and then the value of that particular um, target element 
Okay, so I think that's it. And let's just try this. Save our file, login.js. And email and password not defined. Okay. So that's because we need to specify here the user email. And this is user password. Save. And um, refresh our page. And in here, what we could do is type in our email. So for example, um, test user one at gmail.com and then the password will be one two one three one four one five and then sign in and there is no user um, record corresponding to this identifier the user may have been deleted so this is um, a response coming from our database um, firebase data uh, firebase database to be exact and if you try to uh, visit our project in Firebase. Okay, so if we go to authentication. And in here, we don't have um, any users yet. So what we could do is um, add also the sign up for our um, application. So every time the, the, the user clicks on the sign up, then it will create a user right here in our firebase database so that will be uh, we will be creating another um, on a click event right here so on click this will be for the sign up right so this will be a sign up user and of course we need to define that function so cons and then sign up um, user plus event and then open and close curly braces and in here what we could do is try to prevent um, the default behavior of the button and we can use the oath component um, coming from our firebase object so create user with email and password so we're gonna be adding um, a user using the email and their password so of course we need to specify the user um, user email there you go and of course the user password right here there we go and um, right here we could add it then um, block so what we could do is use the oath and then open curly braces open and close curly braces and of course we can um, try to redirect to the home page of our app so that will be forward slash and in here we're gonna add the catch um, statement just like this you could co copy and paste this okay and then save and um yeah i think that's it and of course we can try to preview this okay here we go okay so that will be test one this is just to test the user component or i mean the user uh, sign up component so test 12 at gmail.com and then we're gonna add a password for example one two one Again, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Okay, and then create your Amazon account. And well, let's see. There you go. So it redirected us to the home page of our of our application, and we should be able to. Um, if the sign up is successful, then we should be able to have the user right here okay so test 12 at gmail.com and we now have a new user with this particular email that we have used to sign up inside our application so for now for example we want to log into our system um, as you can see we can redirect 
to log in to home page without problems because we're not restricting currently the user movement or the user pages so we need to do that in the next video, uh, video tutorial so for now let's try to log in by using this part of email so testtrial.gmail.com and of course the password that we have specified earlier to sign up and then click on sign in if we are getting this particular page then that's uh that um it means that we have successfully created the user and we can successfully um, log into our system by by using that particular combination of email and password so i think that's all there is to it in this video guys and that's a lot to take in i know but um um if as you go along with this tutorial you will learn that uh it is not that easy uh it is not that hard to learn this particular component of our um, e-commerce website so again if you have questions um, regarding our video tutorial you can ask questions in the comment section below and of course we are we are replacing or we are yeah we're replacing the we are adding the link to the github um the source of this particular project so you can check on that um, whatever your problems you can try to um, check it and copy the the correct code that we have been using in inside our e-commerce website so uh, there's a lot of features that we could add here inside our application um, i'm planning to add also a search and filter for example to click uh, if you click on this links um, so for example customer service then um, we will be redirected to uh, to that particular page and also we could add a category right here that if you click on that particular category then it will display all the products under that category and of course guys we already have added the footer from the previous tutorial and you can enhance this you can um, make use of this to add more links to your e-commerce website so again thank you for watching guys and thank you for following this video tutorial series and see you in the next video